infinite wire current that comes out of the board. Okay. Then you have another current that goes in. Current is going into the board. Infinite wire here. Infinite wire here. This current comes out. This current goes in. This current is for I value. This is I value. You have to find out if the distance between these two current wire is A. You have to find out where the magnetic field in this line will be zero. That magnetic field where this line will be zero. Okay, tell me, did you get? Can it be zero between the wires? Why? They will add up. They will add up. Magnetic field because of this, between them will be where? It will be upper. Up. Due to that, it will be what? It will be again up. So they will add up. Okay, can we see on this side? Magnetic due to four I current on this side will be where? Up or down? It will be. It will be go like this. So it will be down. Okay. So magnetic field because of four I is like this down. Because of this I over here will be up. There is magnetic field because of I. Okay. I K by five. Can these two cancel ever? Why? Because this 4i magnetic field is near to 4i. The current is also high and it is nearer as well. So the, this magnetic field will be always greater than that. It will never cancel even though they are in the opposite sides. Get it? But over here, the magnetic field because of the 4i will be upper. This is B4i and you do I will be down BI. Now even though the current is less but this point is closer to I. So that would compensate its lower current. Fine. So they, they can cancel this side. So let's say that they cancel out at a distance X. How much is that X? Find out. Anybody want the answer? A by A. B4i should be equal to Bi to cancel out there. B4i is mu naught into 4i divided by 2 pi this distance a plus x. This should be equal to mu naught i divided by 2 pi x. So mu naught i, mu naught i, 2 pi, 2 pi can cancel the way. You get x equal to a by 3. Okay. But the distance a by 3 away from the lower current, away from the right hand side, the magnetic field will become so, 0. The previous answer I got it including the distance between the two points. 4a by 3 minus a. Okay? Any doubts? No doubts? Okay, so this was application of BO Sauer law. To find the magnetic field due to a circular wire or due to a straight wire. Okay. Next, we are going to uh, discuss something which is similar to Gauss law in electrostatic. Do you remember Gauss law? Gauss law enables you to find out the electric field easily without it much of a hassle. If there is a symmetry, you can find out the electric field just by using Gauss law easily. Okay, so let's discuss what is this and then we'll have application of that law. So BO Sauer law is done. Yeah, I will make this further. See, I have been using this for a month now. All the knowledge and instructions. Yes, we have a case when the wire is in Yeah, yeah, of course. There are such numericals. Wires are in a spiral coil like this, you will find at this center what is the magnetic field. So I will give that as a book. Then we will discuss it out if you are not able to solve it next. The hint is, imagine a dx width of a circle like that. In that dx there will be number of terms which will be total distance where the spiral is divided. You are talking about this case, right? 
So from here to here, total number of turns is n. So in dx length, the number of turns will be total number of turns divided by this length multiplied by dx. Okay. So that you have to multiply and solve it. So unless you solve it in a numerical, it is big. It can't be torn like a theory. It's a numerical which you are saying. All right. So uh, next law in this chapter, which is similar to Gauss theorem, is Ampere's circuital law. Okay, it's a counterpart of Gauss law. Just like, uh, just like your Biot-Savart law is a counterpart of Coulomb's law. Similarly, this law is a counterpart of Gauss law, or Gauss theorem. Okay, do you remember the expression of Gauss theorem? Integral of d dot d a or d s, whatever it is, is equal to charge enclosed by epsilon naught. Okay, this was the Gauss theorem. What is this d a? Small difference. If small uh, surface area element over a Gaussian surface. Yes or no? We apply Gauss theorem through a 3D enclosure. You know this? There has to be an enclosure. Inside the enclosure, if Q is enclosed, that comes on the right hand side. This was a Gauss theorem. Okay? And the circuit law is something like this. First, write down the expression B dot DL may not have. This is as a circuit law. Okay, this is applied in enclosure. Spelling is correct. Let me record it. Otherwise, I don't care. This is enclosure. This is applied on an enclosure, and this is applied over a loop. What is the difference between loop and an enclosure? Passing through the loop? Zero. Understood? 
So if you integrate this over this loop, like we dot here, here, then we dot here, there, if you complete the loop and you integrate it, that should be equal to mu naught into whatever current is enclosed, whatever current is passing through the loop. Okay? Now current need not pass through in a particular direction. It just like current through that current should just come out of the loop or go in the loop. It doesn't matter whether it go like this or like that or like this. It should just come out or go in such a way. Coming out, you can take positive, going in, you can take negative. Alright? Uh, if current is in the same plane as a loop, it doesn't cross the loop. Like, let's say current is like this. It doesn't go in the loop, right? It doesn't pass the loop. Understood? This is not counted. It should just, you can imagine like as if the loop has a very thin membrane. So current should cut that membrane sound. That's it. Okay, like that you can understand. Alright, now let's try to analyze this further. So integral V dot DL can be written like this. It can be written like integral of magnitude of V, magnitude of DL into cos of angle between them. Okay, just like E dot DA was written as E into DA into cos of angle between them. Yes or no? Okay, now right hand side is straightforward. I can just find out by multiplying the current passing through into mu naught, I get a right hand side. But left hand side I have to integrate. But the problem with integrating right hand side is there are three variables B, L, and theta. So it's not a straightforward integral. In fact, you will not be able to integrate for unsymmetrical cases. Okay? So when you integrate, you must know what is theta. Otherwise, how can you integrate if theta is not known to you? Alright? And when theta will be known? Loop you can imagine. Loop you can take anything of your choice. So loop, direction you know, DL how it will move. Suppose you take this as your loop, your DL will be like this. Then DL will be like this. So DL direction is known to you because you have assumed the loop. Okay? But magnitude field direction also should be known to you. Otherwise, how will you find out the angle between B and DL? Okay? So right on, before you apply the APS law, you must know the direction of the magnetic field as well. So APS law is used only to find magnitude of the magnetic field. Direction should be known beforehand. Just like Gauss theorem. In Gauss theorem also, you must know the direction. Gauss theorem just gives you the magnitude of the electric field. 